Hello. Um, I don't know if you can see me all too well. It's what I look like, but my hair is a, a bit of a mess today. Um, my name is Russell Hayden, and I am a music producer. I didn't really know what my first YouTube video should be about, but I figured there wouldn't really be a better place to start than just by sharing some of the free or low-cost options that help me make music every day and maybe can help some other people make music too. The first one I'm going to mention is obviously Spitfire Labs. Labs is an incredible resource by people making sample-based instruments all over the world, and I really can't say enough good things about it. The soft piano alone is a Yamaha U3, and the soft piano instrument has probably been used on millions of records at this point. I see people using it constantly, and um, it's also pretty recognizable in a lot of songs. But there are so many instruments inside of labs that go outside of the soft piano. There's drums, and there's dry strings that I use constantly, and there's just a lot of really, really great, all equally high quality instruments in here to use that work work for pop, they work for trap, they work for orchestral music. Spitfire is a funny company because they're one of the only companies that have the most expensive plugins I've ever seen and also completely free plugins that are just as high quality. I can't really recommend Spitfire Labs enough. And also a quick mention to Spitfire's original series where they have a bunch of $30 sample instruments and those are equally great and just as useful and only $30 each, which compared to some of their $1,000 libraries is definitely quite a steal. Next, I'd want to give a mention to Native Instruments. Uh, they have a lot of free resources and a lot of really good instruments that would work on a variety of sources. They have Contact Player, but they also have a free version. I have a full version of Contact, so I don't know how often I use sounds from the factory library, but this would definitely be a great start if you don't want to invest in the entirety of Contact right away, but it probably will get you hooked. They also have this community drive with a lot of well-known producers like- Okay, hey. Editor Russell here. Um, just realizing that Native Instruments on their website has another community drive pack that I didn't even know that they had. And the people that are involved in this pack, it's insane. Sia is in it. There's 20 vocal dry ad libs from Sia in this pack. Take a Day Trip is in it. Uh, DJ Dahi, Just Blaze. This is insane. I haven't even downloaded this yet. I bet it's crazy. What? What's the... Just Blaze has 40 drum samples that are in here. 15 drum loops and grooves from Dahi, like, this is insane, like, this is, and it's free. Native Instruments also has, like, dedicated, uh, producer kits for machine and stuff, and you can really use them in any DAW, but, uh, so those are worth checking out as well, but as far as the free stuff goes, to keep it on par with this video, that's crazy. Okay, back to, back to the video. Going back to Spitfire for a bit, Christian Henson is one of the co-founders of Spitfire, and uh, there's this separate company that he's now involved in called Pianobook. Pianobook.co.uk is an incredible resource of people sampling really anything they have access to and then uploading those sample instruments to Pianobook. There's a lot of decent sampler patches, which is made by David Hillowitz, and those are really great as well and completely free. A lot of one-shot kits have been really helpful. You can find a lot of these one-shot kits on Reddit. There's a lot of subreddits with loop kits and one-shot kits and drum kits, and a lot of that's great, and they're typically all free. But on the Drum Broker, which is uh, hiphopdrumsamples.com, they also have a lot of one-shot kits that are typically no more than $30 uh, from producers who make really great sounds. And they typically do this by maybe taking a synth or even a VST instrument and running it through guitar pedals or other uh, analog gear to give it a unique sound and then uploading all those WAV files in the key of C so you can easily drop it into whatever sampler you work with and then make your own instrument out of the one-shot samples. I'll probably get into this more in a future video because this is something that I actually think is really interesting and I've even created some of my own one-shots from scratch and would want to share how to do that. Um, and then also creating a contact instrument, which was something that was fairly difficult when I first learned how to do it. By the way, speaking of gear, and I, I wasn't even going to say anything, but this is not an SM57, this microphone. It is the, it, it's the pile ripoff version of it. And I really like it a lot. 
<laughs> maybe I'll do a separate video on clone microphones, which is definitely something I could rant about for a while. But yeah, this is a clone SM57. And basically the only reason I have it is because I think they're like $15 or something like that. And um, I think I was doing a podcast setup and we needed a lot of microphones and to have 10 SM57s is a thousand dollars. It's also just a cool talk back mic and to have something just hanging around the studio to use. It hasn't made its way onto any records yet, but I could honestly definitely see it making its way onto some records, especially if I wanted to sample and make it distorted or something. But speaking of cheap gear, this definitely uh, makes it to the list. This pile ripoff SM57. All right, 